diseases of groundnut so now we'll see what are the important diseases in uh, groundnut the scientific name of groundnut is arachis hypogea and uh, my name is nh shankar reddy and i'm doing phd plant pathology in anamal university these are the list of important diseases in uh, groundnut first one is early thicka which is caused by cercospora arachidi cola or mycosperilla arachidis whereas late thicka is called by cercosporidium personatum or mycosperilla berkeli now it is caused as now the new name is nothopasolospora personata rust is caused by paxini arachidis crown rot or collar rot is caused by aspergillus niger or aspergillus flavus dry root rot macrophomina fasciolina anthrocnos colotrichum dematum stem rot or pod rot trirosium rolsi bacteria related pseudomonas solanaceae bud necrosis or ring mosaic tomato spotted wilt virus kala hasti maladi which is a nematode disease tylenchorhynchus uh, now we will see in detail about one by one first one is early thicka which is caused by cercospora arachidicola or mycosperilla arachidis in we can see the clear diagnostic symptoms here this disease uh, we can see this disease or we can visualize this disease after 3 to 4 weeks after sowing we can clearly see here circular brown color or dark brown color spots or reddish brown color spots along with yellow halo it's very 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 important dark brown or red color spots with yellow halo whatever the spots you can say bro dark brown color or red color spots with yellow halo you can clearly see the yellow halo and on the lower surface brown color spots can be seen in the later stages of the disease what will happen the spots on the upper surface slowly starts to convert into brown color or black in color so this is about early thicka so coming to late thicka which is caused by cercosporidium personatum or mycosperilla berkeli or the new name is nothopathospora personata on the right side we can clearly see the symptoms can be seen on the lower surface make sure guys this whereas early thicka will occur in uh, in 3 to 4 weeks after sowing whereas late thicka will takes 5 to 7 weeks after sowing 5 to 7 weeks after sowing the same color or same brown or black or dark reddish spots can be seen on the lower surface but there is no yellow halo can be seen here there is no yellow halo that is the main difference between early thicka and late thicka late thicka brown spots are reddish brown spots are brown spots which is surrounded by a circular yellow halo whereas the circular yellow halo which is absent in the late thicka so this on the upper surface we can also see in, you know uh, uh, at brown color or black color spots and uh, this uh, in the later stages if it goes in later stages that will coincide with the rust disease but we can clearly visualize if there is an yellow halo that is early thicka if there is no yellow halo the mainly symptoms of late thicka that can be seen on the lower surface so coming to the management aspects of uh, both the diseases field sanitation along with the seed treatment with pyram or carbondizim at the rate of 2 gram 2 gram per kilogram of seed can be recommended along with the spray mango zip at the rate of 1 kilogram per hectare or carbondizim at the rate of 250 grams per hectare or chlorothalonil at the rate of 1 kilogram per hectare can be recommended and some of the resistant varieties are available here for early thicka pi 109839 162857nc53303 are the resistant varieties for early thicka whereas for late thicka or late leaf spot pi 261893 and 262090371521 ALR1 are the resistant varieties available for both the leaf spots there are combined uh, uh, you know uh, resistant varieties are available for both uh, leaf spots that is PA259747 and NCAC3139 are the resistant varieties available for this late thicka and early thicka so coming to comparison between early thicka and late thicka we can see here Uh, seasonal development whereas early thicka will occur in early season whereas late thicka you can see in late season shape of the spots circular to irregular shaped spots can be seen in early thicka whereas usually circular shaped spots can be seen in late thicka so the most of the spores can be seen on the i mean uh, i mean uh, formation of symptoms as the spores can be seen on the upper surface in the case of early thicka whereas in the case of late thicka that is in lower surface so uh, the color of the spots in the upper surface the color of the spots in the upper surface is light brown to black in color in the early thicka whereas brown to black in color in the uh, in the case of late thicka 
on the lower surface brown color spots can be seen in early thicca whereas black color spots can be seen in late thicca compared to the, this both the leaf spots are thicker leaf spots early thicca is very dangerous compared to late thicca because the late thicca that occurs in very late season and almost spots entire everything can be formed there is nothing to do with the uh, uh, yield if you coming to early thicca definitely it has a great impact on yield because it occurs in early season or you know uh because so that uh, uh, early thicca will be very dangerous compared to late thicca third one is paxinia arachidis so rust is caused by paxinia arachidis we can see here on the lower surface of leaves symptoms mo may mostly appears on the lower surface here in groundnut uh, lower surface we can see orange colored rust pustules those are iridospores or iridia iridosore orange color rust pustules that can be seen on the lower surface of leaves on the lower surface orange color rust pustules can be seen if we visualize in a microscope we can see millions and millions of iridospores that are reddish brown in color or orange in color we can see on the lower surface in a severe infection that can leads to shriveling of uh, seeds and as well as the uh, leaves we can see and uh, only iridia and telial stage can be known to occur in this uh, groundnut rust so coming to the management aspects a uh, volunteer groundnut plants and groundnut keeper should be eradicated and spraying of chlorothalalin at the rate of 1 kg per hectare or tridomorph at the rate of 500 ml per hectare or mancozib at the rate of 1 kg per hectare any one of these fungicides can be recommended along with some of the resistant varieties are developed by icrisat that is icrisat breed lines icg fdrs 4 10 and tifrost 12 and 13 can be recommended for this groundnut rust so coming to crown rot or collar rot which is caused by aspergillus niger or aspergillus niger or aspergillus flavus so we can clearly see on the pods or on the you know in the lower stem region or on the pod formation region a black color powdery growth or black color growth of fungus can be seen or black color fungal spores or sooty like growth can be seen we can clearly visualize a black color uh, growth on the uh, uh, you know on the uh, uh, pods and as well as uh, in the stem region so these are the heavily uh, infected with aspergillus fungus that is a black uh, uh, i mean uh, aspergillus flavus so this seedlings will produce a toxin called aflatoxin which is a very dangerous toxin which is unfit for consumption this groundnut infected with this aspergillus is unfit for consumption which is a very serious disease or problem in a groundnut production since groundnut is highly prone to this aspergillus so this black color if we see in this black color powdery masses or black color fungal spores on the groundnut is better to dispose it rather than for consumption the black uh, sorry the aspergillus infected grains are unfit for consumption so coming to the management aspects avoiding mechanical damage of uh, pots and kernels as well as the harvesting of pots should be uh, dried properly so drying of uh, harvested grains properly will be uh, alternate method for uh, escaping out uh, from uh, you know aspergillus so deep plowing and crop rotation with the chickpea and wheat also gives a little bit relief and the seed treatment with the thyrum capton or corbendism at the rate of 3 g per kg can be recommended and some of the resistant varieties are available that is uh, resistant genotypes that is ec2115 are the variety that mean resistant genotype that can be recommended for this aspergillus so coming to dry root rot which is caused by macrophomina fasciolina on the right side we can see rotting of roots that is very simple and clear uh, uh, indication we can see initially uh, water soaked reddish brown color water soaked lesions appears on the leaves and then later uh, you know light brown color uh, 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 conversion of leaves can be seen uh, the infected roots become weak and converted into in the black color structures or black color uh, 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 rottens or uh, uh, this root rots and uh, completely the roots will shreds and uh, they can't able to bear the hold or they can't able to weight, uh, weight of the uh, uh, heads so due to this infestation of or due to this uh, uh, rotting of the stem uh, it can slowly starts to die and wilting symptoms also can be observed and uh, if we cut open this uh, stem we can see the black color discoloration uh, uh, you know black color discoloration and black color mycelial mat can be observed so coming to the management aspects field sanitation or seed treatment with thyrum or corbendism at the rate of 2 g per kg of seeds or fungal biocontrol agent that is trichoderma variety at the rate of 4 g per kg of seeds can be recommended along with crop rotation with non host uh, non host crops is also an optional method of uh, managing this disease 
coming to stem and pod rod which is caused by sclerosium rolsi if you can see here on the stem region or in the root region we can see white color mycelial growth can be clearly seen white color mycelial growth can be clearly seen on the stem region sometimes in pods also a uh, white color mycelial growth can be seen in this uh, uh you know this white color mycelial growth slowly starts to extend from the uh, stem or roots to uh, upper stem regions and uh, sometimes in a very rarely we can see now uh, we can also see in a uh, leaves and uh, later stages uh, mycelial mat can be densely deposited and especially on the root region is the characteristic symptoms of uh, this uh, stem rot or pod rot that is caused by sclerosium rolsi so coming to the management aspects field sanitation or crop rotation with cotton or wheat or onion and application of a triazole like propiconazole through irrigation water is a triazole group of fungicide this are a new generation group of fungicide that can be recommended for this disease and uh, growing resistant genotypes like icgv86416873598 nc9 and gat141 are the recommended resistant varieties or genotypes so rapid the next disease is bacterial wilt which is caused by pseudomonas solanaceae so infected young plants results a rapid wilting of stem and foliage so rapid wilting of stem and foliage can be seen if we see the uh, uh, this bacterial wilt symptoms at the stem region especially at the uh, uh, roots uh, i mean uh, uh, root region uh, both the root region and the stem region if we split open this uh, uh, stem we can see so brown color discoloration of tissues or we can especially we can see here brown color discoloration of tissues especially on the xylem or pith regions can be seen uh, if we dip into water we can see the bacterial ooze that is the identification symptoms of the infection of a bacterial disease and we can also seen in uh, uh, rice i think in uh, rice tungro virus uh, uh, we can also see uh, this sorry not tungro virus sorry uh, bacterial blight of rice uh, uh, you know bacterial ooze out can be uh, produced if we uh, dip in water the bacterial infected uh, leaves or stems can be dip into water we can see the bacterial ooze out that is a characteristic symptom of uh, characteristic uh, characteristic symptom of uh, bacterial infection and coming to the here brown color discoloration can be seen on the root region if we cut open the uh, xylem as well as pith regions if you see the upper region that is especially leaf region a uh, light green or chlorotic uh, uh, spots uh, i mean uh, chlorotic uh, patches or curling and tipping of leaves can be seen on the upper regions so coming to the management aspects field sanitation crop rotation with wheat or sorghum or cotton or rice or sugar can any one of the crop uh, the crop rotation with and uh, disease free seeds uh, using of disease free seeds along with soil application of urea and minimum amount of urea as well as mineral ash as well as organic manure and application of chloropicrin at the rate of 30 kg per hectare at 10 days before sowing and growing resistant varieties like anona rosa tupai and banting these are the resistant varieties available so coming to the bud necrosis which is caused by tomato spotted wilt virus so it is this bud necrosis is also called as this bud necrosis of groundnut is also called as ring mosaic or groundnut mosaic or bunch top of mosaic or chlorosis of mosaic or ring motile or bud blight of mosaic these are all the different names it is mostly familiar with ring mosaic or groundnut mosaic or bunch top of uh, uh, groundnut if we see the symptoms we can clearly see Uh, clearly we can see here uh, you know uh, chlorotic uh, spots are you know uh, 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 proliferation of axillary shoots can be seen and as well as mainly we can see chlorotic spots on the young leaves and the leaflets can be seen so this uh, res- uh, this infection also results in stunting of plants as well as uh, you know the seeds produced the infected plants as well as the small shriveled and motile seeds can be produced and the, it look like a very beautiful chlorotic streaks or motiles can be seen here this is the identification symptom of bud necrosis so coming to uh, management aspects so before that uh, we can see the vector so this bud necrosis is transmitted by the vector thrips which is thrips tabaci or franklin franklin yella species that transmit this is this is the thrips species that is thrips tabaci that can transmit this disease coming to the management aspects removal and destroying of uh, infected plants up to 6 week after sowing and intercropping with sorghum or pearl millet that can reduce the incidence along with spray monocrotopus that is an insecticide that can be recommended for the controlling of this insect vector and uh, spraying of uh, uh, monocrotopus at the rate of uh, uh, 500 ml per hectare or spraying with antiviral principle that is avp uh, i think uh, i did a video on this antiviral principle how to prepare it and how to use it uh, 
uh, in plant virology you please uh, you guys can check out uh, the, therefore you guys will know how to prepare it and how to use it and uh, what are all the diseases that can be uh, controlled by this antiviral principles and coming to some growing resistant varieties are cultivars that is icgv 86030 86031 86032 86033 and 86538 are the available resistant cultivars against this disease coming to rosetti virus which is caused by groundnut rosetti virus so coming to the infection on the right side we can see stunting of plant we can see the stunting of plants which are which normally you know dense clump along with the dwarf shoots can be seen and a tough, a tough, tough uh, small uh, leaves can be produced. They are very dense and clump and initially uh, bushy uh, uh, appearance and as well as you know uh, these are uh, yellow uh, leaves are yellow in color and they exhibit chlorosis and they exhibit usually chlorosis and they are remain stunted and if it produce very few flowers and sometimes it bears no flowers or it produce no uh, pots also. So coming to the vector, this disease is transmitted by the species of aphid that is uh, Aphis uh, crassivora transmit this disease in a persistent manner. So uh, use uh, uh, heavy seed rate and uh, uh, rowing out periodically with infected plants. If there is infected plants are available, it's so better to row it out. And uh, spraying of monocrotopus or methyl dematon at the rate of 500 ml per uh, uh, hectare can be recommended to control the vector so that the viral disease can be controlled automatically. So, and the growing resistant cultivars like RMP12 and uh, 91 are the available resistant cultivars against this disease. So, coming to questions related uh, exams as well as ARS and NET. So, definitely it is a very important crop that in they can place many questions regarding this, especially this early blight and as well as the late blight, their management practices, especially this crown rot uh, that is aspergillus, a very uh, serious, uh, you know, serious uh, problem in uh, groundnut production, as well as especially this uh, aspergillus contamination and what is asper I mean aspergillus contamination, what is uh, aflatoxins and what is aspergillosis, definitely they will ask. And there are some strains in asper, I mean, uh, um, uh, aspergillus contamination that is B1, B2 or G1, G2, M1, M2 among the all uh, strains B1 is the most toxic and most dangerous form of uh, toxin of aspergillus and uh, regarding uh, another question uh, they can also uh, ask questions like rust that is Paxinia arachidis and bud necrosis of groundnut they can ask vectors definitely they can ask vectors and coming to here uh, early blade and late blades are very very important along with this aspergillus contamination definitely uh, there will be one or two questions uh, in exams most of the times